welcome to Balls and All, your sports and leisure show. And uh, we're coming to you from a place where a lot of people out there, especially with motorbikes or four-wheel drives, will know. We're up at the Pine Forest, up here off uh, Nangara Road, just over there behind our cameraman. And uh, I'm talking to a couple guys who, uh, if they get a little bit better, they're probably going to be with a crusty demon soon. I don't know what they'll call them, though. Probably uh, something like... Uh, Stack King. One guy here, we call him Stack King. He's right here. Uh, hello, Stack King. How are you? Uh, very stackadelic, mate. Stackadelic. <laughs> <laughs> Point out the old uh, crack in the exhaust there. Did today. Very good. Got some sick air and flew off at least 20 times so far. So, yeah. And uh, you've only just bought this bike, didn't you? Yeah, I watched the Crusties and thought, oh, I can do that shit, eh? You know, too easy. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah, well, I can do the uh, the crusty stuff too, and uh, yeah, this is uh, the uh, YZ250 Yamaha 94 model, and uh, it's got a lot of dirt on it because it lives in the dirt. And you got a little bit of dirt on you as well. How did this happen? Um, he kicked me off because I was beating him. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, and uh, here we are. Justin Metzger here. How are you going, Justin? <laughs> no, mate. Irks, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sweet as. Now, tell us a bit about your bike. Uh, it doesn't crash as well, mate. It doesn't crash as well as Jimmy's, eh? Jimmy cannot stay on that thing. Sick air, mate. Like, you fly off in front of him, then half an hour later he comes home. But, yeah, no, this is a 95 CR, 250. Good bike to probably not start on, because it's pretty gutsy. And, like, this is my, sec this is my second bike. I didn't start with a, a newer one like this, but no, this is kicking ass today. It's going well. It even starts first kick compared to that. So the deal okay. is uh, a lot of people come up here and have a bit of a ride around. We're going to talk to some more people as we go. How you got Action Man? How you got Action Man? Pretty good. That's good enough for him. Okay. <laughs> what? You've got to make sure when Action Man's talking, the subtitles come up, all right? So he just says, howdy, and it means what? <laughs> Okay, well listen, uh, we're going to be walking around talking to a few of the people uh, who uh, come up here, totally unexpected, they're going to come and we're going to walk up and have a chat with them, and uh, maybe we'll get these guys, we'll talk them to doing some jumps. Now we brought the bus, because I've been told that they're good at jumping the bus, so we're going to try that a little later on, is that right guys? Right, crash into it. I'll jump you, but not it. the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a better time getting over the bus. Uh, not as if it's we'll Mount Hasselbacker you. or anything, is it? Stack you and Tony up together and then we'll <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere near stacked near Tony. Okay, well, we're going to be going, uh, showing you a story that uh, Wayne did recently, talking to some guys at the State Basketball League, and uh, let's have a look at the story. Oh, sorry, we'll get the balls and all rolling. As we go. We'll get the balls and all rolling. Keep swinging. Now let's go look at the basketball. Hello, I'm Wayne Simmons for Balls and All, and we've swung on down here to the uh, Red Baglia. A basketball gets thrown in. That must be by Nick Lagovic. I guess they know I got some shake and bake. But anyway, we're at the game seeing the Redbacks taking on the Willington Tigers. Now, the uh, Redbacks have a 9-9 record, and standing here with me is the head coach of the Burstwood Redbacks, C.J. Jackson. How you doing? Yeah, real good. How about yourself, Wayne? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Now, if you could tell me a little bit about your team this year. First year as head coach of the Redbacks? Yeah, basically this year I've been really just got inherited the role. Uh, what happened was Norm Majors was the head coach and was, he had the problems with his uh, schedule and everything and he just dropped everything right on your lap. So here's CJ, coach the team for the rest of the season. I was like, okay, <laughs> here we go. So uh, thus I became the head coach. So it was really an inheritance type of thing that happened. Oh, good. It was good. Now, I know it's been a great experience for you. Now, you played at the uh, higher levels. Um, you played in the States, and uh, you played uh, here um, with Mandra and various other teams, Willerton. Um, what experience do you think you can bring to these young guys to get them together? Well, the ironic thing about these, uh, the birds we got is that I actually played with most of them, with Bates and with uh, Earp, those guys. And one thing, we have, one thing we have is guys who've been with NBO experience, so we try to use their NBO experience to help us actually win ball games and uh, you know fortunately some some hasn't happened it has worked out some for us and you know we, but we've had a lot of adversity so we really trying to overcome the adversities that we've had uh, excellent now um, CJ tonight now you're going up against the Willington Tigers who are definitely going to the playoffs and they boast probably the most potent backcourt in the league between um, James Harvey 
who's averaging fit over 50 points a game the last two ball games, and you have Stevie Black, both of these players for the Wildcats, uh, NBL champions. What will you do tonight? What will your strategy be to uh, contain these two guys? Well, the, the, I think the biggest thing is that the guys know that those guys have played together, being training with the Wildcats and with the also with the Tigers. So they actually got their click going. We, what we try to do is uh, basically make Harvey actually bring the ball down the court and actually make Blackie into the two guards. So basically do opposite what they actually do and try to throw them out of the game. So that, we just try a few things. And for us, it's just a, the guys, it's the last game of the season. Those guys need to go out there and enjoy themselves. And just, uh, you know, it's the last game. So they have to go out and, you know, they don't have nothing to prove. They just go out and have fun, basically. That's what I want them to do tonight. Now, I mean, you have a lot of veterans players. You've got uh, Brendan Fatimar, who came back for football to play. You've got Nikki Lakovic, who uh, former Wildcat player, Jamie Baker. I mean, you have a lot of a talent and experience here. Um, do you like your chances this evening? Yeah, I, I think we have an excellent chance of winning. Uh, one thing that we have not to do is not is really prove ourselves on the court against a big team. And those guys are putting up so many points in the league. They got their, you know, their first and second in a lot of categories. So we try to see if we can minimize our turnovers and maybe come over to hunt that way. That would be the best thing for us to do. Now, uh, they also boast uh, Matt Foster, who I believe is leading the league in rebounder with almost 15 rebounds a game. So he's pulling his Rodman act as usual. What are you guys going to do to keep him off the glass? Basically just box out. That comes down to a fundamental thing. We got, we let Matt sometimes guard him, Matt Earp guard him, so Matt's been having really good at stats too as far as rebounding. He's pulled down 20 plus the last like four or five games for us, so it'll be an interesting contest between those two inside the paint. It's just who's going to foul out first. <laughs> <laughs> two big bodies banging and I don't think they'll be saying thank you and please. So we want to wish you every success tonight and good luck. No problem. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Now I'm here with James Harvey, uh, resident superstar for the uh, Willington. I keep getting this basketball. There must be a basketball in my future. Nick Lackham it keeps throwing a basketball in there. Look at him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'll get to it in a minute. I'll get to it in a minute. I'll get to it in a minute. for the championship Perth Wildcats basketball team. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing good tonight, Wayne. Unfortunately, uh, out with an injury, but uh, hopefully if you come out to a game soon, I can put on a show for you. Now, um, what's the deal with 60 points, man? Did somebody um, piss you off, or what was the deal? 60 points. What's the deal with that? Well, it's not often that I get to come up against two Wildcats with Mike Ellis coaching Sterling and Marcus Timmons playing, so it was a, you know, a little personal point to prove out there, and you know things got rolling. But Stephen Black had 32, so between us, you know, the two, the backcourt Wildcats had over 90 points. You know, so it was a big night for us. I mean, a real big night. And uh, now the game I came to, I came to see you against Lakeside, and uh, they had to switch about four or five people out on you. You fouled out two of them, and you had 30 at half on 13 from 16 shooting from the field. Now, you want to talk about those tough fadeaways you were taking? That's my shot. That's from, that's, that's from shooting over the old man when I was five years old. Those big long arms he had, I had to shoot over the top of him. But, you know, I've just been shooting the ball well. You know, I guess that's my job, and I'm looking forward to this season with the NBL. Hopefully I can carry some of this form in, into the season. Now, um, you guys have a tough run coming ahead. You got the playoffs starting. Um, who are you likely to be facing? I think it's looking like Bunbury. We'll play Bunbury at this stage, so I'll look, I'm looking forward to that. You know, they've won the, a couple of championships. I think two of the last three uh, championships of the state league. So, you know, it's good to get them first. It'll test us out, see where we're standing. You know, we we are the best team in the league right now, and uh, I guess you got to beat last year's champions to, to you know take the crown this year. So I look forward to it. Now, will that series start in Bunbury, or will you get home court advantage? No, we'll have home court advantage. We'll start that in Wednesday in Bunbury, and then come back, I guess, uh, the following week, Friday, Saturday night at Willett Nifnet. Necessary. Hopefully we can get that one in Bunbury. That's the key. And uh, and then come up with the win next week in Willen. Now, when does your preseason training start for the Wildcats? We started, we did, this week was the first week we started on court with the Olympic campaign and some of the Olympic team guys going, leaving. Uh, we had to get on court a bit earlier this year. And uh, so this week we started. I had to unfortunately sit out all week with the had a back complaint and uh, you know hopefully I can get that right for the finals on Wednesday. Now um, some uh, I had heard somewhere that you shot 20 for 29. That's a bit of a phenomenal effort. Uh, were those uh, layups or are you were shooting jumpers? No, it was a little bit mixed, I guess mixed in. You know, it was one of those nights where things were just falling. You know, it's not often that you have 60. And uh, you know, I sat out the last six and a half minutes of the game as well. Oh, rub it in. Uh, no. <laughs> 
So you said I would have had 75, but coach set me out. I don't know, something like that, man. No, but you know, the balls were just loose balls were popping to me, and I was getting open shots. I was running well, and you know, things. It's just one of those nights, you know. Yeah, excellent. Well, look, we want to wish you every success, and we know you're gonna turn it out. And I will make a prediction: the winner of this Williton Bunbury series will take out the championship. That'll be us. <laughs> take care, James. Now you know Dewey Michaels, who played on that victorious Wildcat basketball team. You know, he's about six foot eleven. You know, almost you know seven feet. But I, you are. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not, cause I think I'm busted, Dewey. Uh, I seem to be uh, using a little bit of help, but this is the only way I can do the interview. Any way you can, any way you can baby, any way you can. <laughs> now, um, Dewey, you want to tell us about this season and uh, how long are you going to be out? Well, uh, it's been a rough one. Um, it's gonna, I had a stress fracture about three weeks ago. I got another three weeks to go, so I'm at the halfway point, and it has been... It's been a frustrating injury because there's nothing I can do about it, and I can't work out, I can't run, uh, but all I do is swim and do a lot of lifting weights. So, it's been, but it's a tough injury, tough injury. Now, um, as far as the Wildcats training and whatnot, um, you won't be able to go full on with that for what the next couple of months? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, it's going to be about another. I would say, well, they said I should be right to go in about uh, after this gets off in about three weeks. They said, and shortly after, I should be able to get back in it, but. Man, for, for the mo for the moment time, all I got to do is this. So, go get them, boys. Now, there's some people that say uh, you playing for the Birds with Redbacks. Once you went down, that really just damaged their chances for the uh, playoffs. Uh, a bit daunting for you because you're a person that's always been on a winning team, basically, and used to being in finals competition. How does that feel? I hate losing, and this I've never been a part of anything like this. This season has been uh, crazy. I went to the states. I came back. We get a new coach. We got a uh, Everything changed, and so it's yeah, it's going to be tough to watch. And um, I'm proud of the boys able to play as hard as I can through all this. But man, it's just, it's painful. It's like it's like uh, watching your kid get a get a get an get have surgery. I mean, you just don't want to watch it anymore. And so, and this is the number one team we're playing today, so it's going to be a tough one tonight. Um, yeah, it must be the night for injuries because James Harvey's injured, you're injured. Um, this would be such a spectacle of game if both teams were fully fit. It would be a heck of a game. I know it's going to be a great game anyway, but uh, it would just be far more of a spectacle for the fans and say both of you guys were fully fit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, these are uh, teams that know each other real well. Um, a lot of talent with James, uh, with Stephen Black. Uh, we got a, a lot of former Wildcats, Jamie Baker, Matty Yerb, Nick Lakovich on the other squad. It's been a, a great battle. and. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little disappointing, but I'm sure the boys will be up to the challenge, and I think the Redbacks want to finish the season off on the right note. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to the uh, battle tonight between Nick Lakovic, former Wildcat, and Stephen Black, who uh, plays for the Wildcats now and is averaging about 25 to 30 points a game, putting up huge numbers and playing great defense as well. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle of the uh, old guard versus the new guard. So uh, we'll see if the young buck is, what the young buck's got. But uh, Nick's got a few little old, old man tricks, uh, some of them dirty old man tricks that he can uh, show on little <laughs> Did black. you say dirty? Dirty, <laughs> dirty, dirty tricks. So uh, it'll be good. Uh, I think uh, Nick always likes a challenge, and Steven is definitely a challenge. And uh, he had a great week of training. It was the first week of Wildcats camp. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big challenge for Nick, but I think he's up to it. Well, we want to wish you all the best, and we hope you get well because uh, we're used to seeing you on the court. And we want to see you with Dewey's Angels, you know, that group that you have oh, at yeah. the uh, Entertainment Center cheering yeah, for you. Absolutely, absolutely. My favorite little, my favorite group in all of Perth. So uh, <laughs> I wish that we had a Redback contingent of those. <laughs> okay, then. Well, all the best to you, Dewey. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. Now I'll just... Oh, I got to talk now. All right. <laughs> Both teams will be in the spin to try to win this title and uh, hope it works out. Yeah, it was a good story with the basketball. What do you think? I'm not sure it went. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, uh, Justin's going to catch up with a bunch of guys down here, brought all their bikes down, and uh, he's going to chat with them right after this break. still up here at the Pines out in Nangara off Nangara Road and we've been caught up with a couple of people out here and your name is? Clint mate. Oh, what are you riding out here today? KTM 620 2000 model big beast big thumper. 
Big thumper. Love that exhaust, eh? Could we go over and have a look at it? Yeah, man. So, why is it such a gem, Clint? Oh, just, you can't fault it, mate. Everything to do with it, it's perfect. It's just like a two-stroke yeah. bike, basically. A bit heavier, you know. Yeah. Goes well. Gets the front wheel up everywhere I want to go. Goes through the dirt. And it's like road registered yeah, as well. So I've taken the mirrors off and the indicators and all that sort of stuff. So I mean, they're only going to come off when you stack it anyway. Yeah, well, I broke they? one the other day. Cost me 30 bucks, so I'm being cautious now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What's it like on the jumps then? It's pretty good on the jumps. It, like You get up in the air and it just sits nice and level yeah. and flat and lands... Really nice, it's really good. Oh, it's good. Did you make it to the Supercross a while back? Yeah, sure did. Yeah, that Saw was... it on the show. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. That's great to see. Oh, spectacular th what they were doing up there. It's oh, just right. mind-boggling, wasn't yeah. it? I mean, blows you away, man. You come down here and try it, and it's just splat. That's it. <laughs> How about yourself? Well, I've got about 1,100 bucks worth of their vids, I think, sitting at home, yeah. so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I wish I could do that sort of stuff, but yeah. I'm hopeless, you know. <laughs> I mean, I think normally you just go out with your mates and that, you have a good time and you make your own fun, find your own places. Exactly. It's great down here. Oh, I love it down here, man. I prefer it at the Alcamos, actually. It's a bit better out there, uh, up in the dunes. Yeah, up at Pippadini, but there's too many four-wheel drives out there. There is I a lot of four-wheel drives. I think we found that we went up there not long ago and found this sick jump that's got fear this across the front of it. Yeah. And uh, it's sensational. Yeah. I was going over that last week actually, came off twice going over it. Yeah. It really throws you up that jump. Yeah, I find that it's not real tabletop, it's from, it's a bit of a shitty landing. Yeah. Good jump. Yeah, yeah. it's just a, a really flat landing that's really boggy yeah. so as soon as you hit it's just yeah. boom, stop. Yeah. And you're over the handlebar sort of thing. <laughs> that's it, but you get some good height. Which yeah. is some it is good height. It's all yeah. there. Alright, we'll chat with a couple of your other Thanks, mates mate. over here. Yeah. Thanks right. mate. Cheers mate. Okay. All right, with me now is uh, Greg Martin. <laughs> How you doing, Greg? What do you What do you got here today? Oh, I got the Yamaha YZ 250. Yeah, Yamaha. Yeah. Young Young Jimmy's got the Yamaha, and he can't seem to keep it on two wheels or even one wheel. Oh, he's a show pony, that's why. <laughs> Noise out the please. Uh, that's it. Well, how you found yours today? Um, it hasn't really run today. It <laughs> had a faulty plug all day, so I've just scabbed another one and I'm just ready to go now. Yeah, oh, we might have to come out with this, mate. We'll go for a hoon around and That'd be see good. what we can find. That'll be great. Yeah, all right, thanks, mate, for no your time. Worries. Um, actually, we're going to cross to table tennis. And actually, no, we're not. We'll go chat with another person first, eh? <laughs> We're going to table tennis then. <laughs> Hello, I'm James from Balls and All, and I'm speaking with Erwin Parker. How you going, mate? Oh, great. Thanks very much, James. OK, where are we, mate? Oh, at the Western Australian Table Tennis Association Centre in East Victoria Park. Yeah. And it's the uh, finals night of the uh, State uh, Table Tennis Championships. Mm -hmm. And uh, who are the competitors out there at the moment? At the moment, it's the men's doubles final between uh, Mike Andrews... Uh, playing with Dennis Chen against Craig Campbell and uh, Greg Letts. Yeah. And uh, these are all local boys, are they? Uh, yes, they're all, they all play locally, even though they've sort of got varied origins. Um, mm -hmm. Dennis used to, uh, uh, originally from Indonesia, and played in China and then Hong Kong, and then he's been in Australia for quite a few years. Mike's a complete local. Yeah. Uh, Craig's originally from uh, Victoria, but he's been in WA for about 20 years, yeah. and, and, and Greg's a WA yeah. boy as well. So That's great. Uh, we get quite a variety of uh, players here from... Uh, Quite a few overseas players and yeah. quite a mixture of uh, sort of ethnic um, ethnic groups. Yeah. Now you're the executive director here. What got you involved? Well, I've been a player since uh, I was about 16, which is about 36 years ago, and I've always been. Um, uh, I've played continuously since uh, since then, and um, I've been involved in administration, even going back to my university days, and uh, sort of carried through and been going on the association board for over 30 years. So, and it's just sort of progressed onto here. I wanted to um, uh, do a bit more for um, for table tennis, and and even though this is only a part-time job here, yeah. it's an opportunity to sort of try and help the sport along a bit. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been, that's how I've become involved. Yeah. Now, um, can anyone come down and play? Or oh, yes, definitely. Uh, we're home. We're open. Um, oh, not home. Open uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday nights for a hire from 7:30 onwards. Yeah. And also during the daytime, if someone wants to phone here, they can actually book a table and uh, okay. have a game. So, and also uh, this Sunday afternoon as well, there's a group can come and play yeah. from 12 till 5. Uh, sort of unlimited play at that time. So, as I said, we're trying to uh, encourage players. Yes. Um, we also have a, uh, a junior 
um, beginners group on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock. And uh, we also have uh, sort of coaching on, on Thursday night. So yeah. we, we try to have the place occupied as much. And also for the, the seniors as well, we on Friday morning we have a, a group which is it runs from 9 to 12 and we get about 30 odd um, seniors or over 55s. That's who, awesome. Yeah, so they, they really enjoy it, yeah. as I said. And uh, what's the phone number here if someone gets, uh, wants to get in contact? The phone number is uh, 9470 1830. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we're quite well, um, people are quite welcome to ring up and um, by arrangement you can uh, play at other times. Yeah. Now, is there any other big events coming up shortly you'd like to uh, tell everyone out there? Uh, well, this, this is actually the, the big event uh, at the moment um, and there's nothing sort of planned in the near future. Mm -hmm. But obviously if, if something does come up, we'd like to keep your, uh, your viewers informed um, so that they can um, sort of come down and watch. No worries. Okay, thank you very much for your time. That's okay then. Thanks very much, James. All right. Uh, yeah, I was just doing that interview with those uh, guys playing table tennis, and one well, of the guys sitting next to me was just taking a good laugh at me. How are you going, Dr. Jeff Gallup? Very well. Very. How are you enjoying the table tennis? Oh, yeah, it's very good. It's a lot more competitive than what I ever thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. It's not as physical as American football, but there's a lot of finesse there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it could be with some of the players we got on our team, but yeah. Now, um, you've actually been a member, and you've never missed a final here in 15 years. No, WA table tennis is based in Victoria Park that's my electorate mm -hmm. and I've been coming to the finals every year since 1986 and it's been great to see some of these players uh, each year how they're going how they're improving mm -hmm. and uh, I, I love it every year yeah the competition's always great yeah and did you ever play a sport like this when you were younger oh, I played at table tennis at university yeah. but uh, certainly not to this level yeah yeah, yeah. 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 now um, we also seen you at other events we did the Italian festival when you were there where, where, where are what, bleh, what kind of other places do you go to well of course, being a member of parliament, you, you're involved in the community, yeah. and uh, I'm a great believer in sport, yeah. great believer in community-based activity, so uh, I take, a, take an interest in it. I'm patron of WA Table Tennis, a patron of Western Australian Volleyball, and involved in all of the junior sport in Victoria Park. Yeah, that's mm. awesome. Uh, what, what's coming up big for you, anyway? Oh, well, there's an election, of course, in the next six months sometime, so if you know when it's going to be, yeah. if you can pass on the information... I'd so vote this. Gallup. <laughs> that's good, I like that talk. <laughs> no worries, mate. Well, thanks a lot. Thank nice you. meeting you anyway, mate. All the best. Nice. Good on you. Yeah. He doesn't know, but he's talking now to Bob Wells. All right, the camera's still on. See, this is community TV, so I can stuff up any time I want and just keep talking. And I'm speaking with Bob Welsh now. How you going, mate? Very well indeed. Yeah, great to be here. All right, and what are you doing down here? Well, much the same as, uh, as Jeff. The invitation from Table Tennis. Um, table Tennis is one of the 100-odd sports that's members of the Sports Federation. Mm. And uh, I've had the pleasure to come along a couple of times in the last few years now and watch the quality of play that we've had tonight. Mm -hmm. And how is everything going in the Sports Federation? As far as the Federation is concerned, we're going like a 100 miles an hour at the moment. Mm -hmm. As Jeff mentioned, there's an election coming up shortly. Um, we're working on our own policies for sport and we'll be very, very shortly talking to Mark McGowan and to Norman Moore and other politicians about uh, what we think should be in their various platforms for sport. Yeah. And what other kind of uh, events do you go to? Um, wide and varied, I guess. Uh, Jeff mentioned volleyball, and I was at volleyball earlier this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm involved in surf life taking myself, so I'm always down the beach. Um, more recently, um, Eagles game at, um, at Subi Oval. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, I've got uh, uh, gymnastics coming up and hopefully some hockey as well. Yeah. And uh, what actually made you get involved with the Sports Federation? Did you play a sport and had trouble with something, thought, oh, I'm going to get to the top of this, or...? Well, partly, I guess. I'd, uh, I was involved with Surf Lifesaving for many years and was their state manager mm -hmm. for 15 years and on the board of the Sports Federation through the 80s. The opportunity came up in 92 to, uh, to apply for the job and I thought it would be interesting looking at the whole of sport as opposed to just one. Uh, applied and was successful and here I am now. Mm. That's great. Well, thanks a lot. All the best of luck. It's a pleasure. See you later. Again. No worries. I'm out of here. Thanks, Jimmy, for that story down at the table tennis. We've got the second half to that. Uh, story coming back next week and Clint what's happening buddy well I've been watching the show every week it's a great show and I'm not watching it anymore though because I want the crusty demons to come roost in my yard <laughs> <laughs> absolutely mate I reckon we can roost between us and uh, I reckon we'll go do it now but anyway we're going to cross to Moose he's uh, doing a dog obedience <laughs> dog obedience story so catch up with him
Hi everybody, it's a beautiful Perth day as you can see behind us. <laughs> uh, we are in winter, of course we have to expect a few of these days, but thank God we live in the best city in the world where we do get some great days during winter time. We're down at the Perth Training Obedience Dog Club at Ashfield and uh, we're going to be talking, uh, they're actually having a bit of a comp on at the moment and there's another big one coming on later on the month we want to let you know about. And I'm talking to Eric Herson. Hi er Eric, how are you? Hi, how things? Good, good. Um, hopefully we'll have a better day later on, but it looks like things are just going to be like this today. That's right. Now tell us a little bit about, Eric, uh, what's going on here right now? Uh, what we have actually here is an obedience trial where the dogs are trained to certain levels and they are going for legs of their titles, either companion dog or companion dog excellent or UD dog. So there's various levels there, and depending on the skill involved is what, how you attain various levels. Okay, um, now what do you mean by companion dog or UD dog? What do you mean by that? Okay, the very first level that you have is a companion dog, where the dog learns the basics of healing on lead, um, stand for examination, a, a simple recall, all the basics you'd need in the environment, like in the community, just yeah. to have good manners and socialised, etc. And what they need to do is pass three of these trials here behind us at that particular level, and then what they can do is apply for their companion dog license or uh, title and um, then once they've attained that they learn once they've attained that they learn once they've attained that they a little bit more difficult recalls etc to gain the next level which is the companion dog excellent which is called the open dog and then when you're really glad for punishment there's a lot of other exercises you can teach a dog which are very hard which is called the utility dog level and um, when you've attained that level then you basically reach the a very very obedient dog. So that, that's the one that not like mine that as soon as you open the gate he runs like crazy and you get a chase him but that's the kind of dog that'll go get your slippers and newspaper and cup of tea for you is that right? If you're prepared to put in the effort <laughs> yes and I think we have a similar dog even though I've trained mine it still does silly things on the day which has done one thing today but that's life. Yeah. Now, uh, what is, uh, so that's the UD, utility dog? Yes, the absolute ultimate ultimate level in training. Okay, now tell us, uh, the groups here, are they all from the Perth Training Obedience Dog Club or are they from all over the place? It's all over from the metro area. Various clubs run all over the metropolitan area doing obedience, um, training obedience and that sort of stuff. And what happens is people have these trials which are run through the Canine Association and Perth Training are putting on this trial on behalf of the Canine Association. And anyone who is a member of the Canine Association and wishes to enter here is more than welcome to enter from all over the metro area. Uh, we have people from the country coming in to do the trials and that sort of stuff. So anybody's welcome. If you believe your dog's ready for that level, then you're well, welcome to enter. OK, now um, the big event coming up later on this month. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, because obviously if you want to come down and have a look and uh, uh, have a look at what's going on and see what's involved, that's a, that'll be a great opportunity. So w when is it and where is it and all that kind of stuff? OK, what we have is a national... National uh, Agility Challenge, which is slightly different to the obedience section here, which means there's a lot of jumping. It's like show jumping for horses, and that'll be on the 26th of August this month. Um, it'll be down at Jerry Archer Reserve off Abernathy Road, and it'll uh, start judging at 11 o'clock. It's over in Belmont, of course. Over in Belmont, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Belmont. Yeah. Um, and what'll happen is we have a challenge all over Australia where all the different states hold runoffs, and we had 110 teams from all over Australia enter in the various states and the fastest team from each state actually goes somewhere to one of the other states to compete in the national runoff. Right. So you have six states coming over here and it's Perth's turn to hold the event this year so all the top teams from all over Australia will be coming to Perth to compete here to uh, claim themselves as the top agility team in Australia. That's fantastic. So from all, o all the other states will be here? All over the uh, Australia, from Queensland right through to South Australia, Northern Territory, um, Canberra, everybody comes here. So what you'll have coming over here are the best teams in Australia. OK, so that's done as a team effort too, it's not as just a uh, single dogs and whatever. No, what they'll have is four dogs in a team and then what they do is they run off, they have two rounds, which they call two rounds, they accumulate all the time of the two rounds for each four dogs, so you'll have a total time and then what will happen is the fastest time on the day actually wins the top uh, agility team in Australia. Okay, now and you're going to be actually be one of the officials on the day, is that correct? Yes, I'm going to be the chief steward who actually helps set up the gear and run things and make sure it goes as smoothly as possible on the day. Hopefully we'll have better weather than what we're having today. Yeah, <laughs>
Okay, now that's the event where they come down, they got to go through uh, tunnels and they got to jump up on top of things and go yes. up and down ramps and uh, over seesaws or all that kind of stuff. So uh, that'll be quite a, quite a good uh, exhibition for people to come and have a look at. Yes, it's a very exciting time because what happens is you'll have a lot of very fast, accurate dogs and there's a lot of obstacles to do and there's a lot of skill involved in getting the dogs to do all these sorts of things and what you have is a very good spectacular on the day with all these dogs doing those things and unfortunately sometimes things go wrong which just adds to the day when some dogs are just being naughty for a particular reason yeah. but in general it is such a great day to come and have a look and the spectators just love it. Fantastic. Now how do, uh, if someone wants to know a bit about, that's on the 26th of August, 10 o'clock and uh, what's the phone number if someone wants to find out a bit more about it? You can telephone Luke or Chris and that'll be on 9... You can them there. Oh sorry, <laughs> that'll be Luke or Chris uh, telephone number will be 9 341 6478 or they can telephone me, Eric, on 0404 460 19 Eight. Everybody's welcome. Great, and that should be on the bottom of the screen, so make sure, as we always say, get your pen and paper out, write that down, and go down and have a bit of a look. Uh, Poochies from all over the place, and uh, it'll be a good day, good exhibition there. So I hope to see everybody down there, and what I'd just like to say is thank you to Power because they're sponsoring the events throughout the whole of Australia, and they've allowed us the opportunity to bring all the teams over here. So I'd just like to say thank you very much to them. And of course, Balls thank and you. All will be there as well, so Excellent. we'll be bringing you a bit of the highlights of what's going on. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, Eric. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thanks a lot, Moose. And that was a good story down there. Uh, looks like they have a lot of fun. And uh, if anyone's involved with dogs and that, get in contact with the Per Training and Dog Obedience Club. So there's the boys going by us now, and I think we're going to go to a break. You want? You, we're going for a ride, but they're going to a break. See you, boys. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome back to Balls and All, your sports and leisure show. And as you've seen already, we're wandering around the pine forest here. And I'm talking to a couple of uh, the guys, the bikies here. I'm talking to Frank. Hi, Frank. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. And hi, Dylan. How are you? Good. And uh, you're Mr. Happy, are you? Yep. <laughs> you're going to say to infinity and beyond? <laughs> Tell us, uh, Frank, you got your little fella here and you got your uh, four wheel bike here. Uh, quad racer, yeah. Quad. quad. And you come here often? Yeah, yeah. Every, every couple of weeks I come up here, yeah. take the family out, take the little bloke out on the front. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, did you uh, obviously uh, move from uh, the two wheeler to the four because of this little fella here? Yeah, no, nah, not really. Not really, but yeah, it's a bit safer having a four wheeler than a two wheeler, I suppose. Yeah, and yeah he has a good time. Oh, he loves it, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your bike here. Oh, it's just a 250. Uh, one of the one of the first quad races. It's 85. Um, got the power band and all that in the motor. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good bike here. Now, when you're coming up here, uh, you guys uh, tend to go off in the bush a bit, don't you? Yeah, you, you're better off staying off that, that track there because it's a main road, you see. You can get booked for it as well. Yeah. So you're better off staying in the bush, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now the scary part about having a little fella here with you? Yeah, a little bit it is, yeah. yeah. But when, if I see someone coming up, I'll detour into the bush. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because they do kind of hoon a little bit on the road here, as we're seeing right now, a guy with a... Uh, yeah. Four wheel drive should be out in the bush. No but helmet. No, no helmet or nothing. They got no helmets. And then unfortunately you see him uh, as a report in the newspaper, unfortunately. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well Frank Dillon, thanks for chatting with us. You go and have a good no time, alright buddy? Yeah. Alright. Bye. Bye. See you mate. Okay, well, uh, we're going to now cross over another sport. Uh, uh, we're going to take you to the Ashfield Sports Ground, and we spoke to John Van Hook, who's the guy there who runs the place. And just to give you a bit of an insight of what it's like to run a uh, sports club, it's a, a big organization there, really, because they've got all kinds of sports there, even gridiron. So uh, you guys out there, don't forget, give the number a call. Uh, by the way, get your pen and paper out, because at the end of the show, we've got some giveaways and uh, some entry to to the rodeo coming up and uh, all kinds of things so make sure you get pen paper out. Let's go have a look at the story. Hello, I'm Wayne from Balls and All and we're swinging on down here to the Ashfield Soccer Club and I'm here speaking with John Van Hook 
and hopefully I won't get the hook after this interview. How you doing, John? Oh, uh, forget about the hook. I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> Very good. Now, how long have you been involved with the clubs? Uh, since 1976. Oh, okay, since our cameraman was a baby. Okay, now, and um, your involvement, what got you started in soccer? Uh, well, I was their first senior coach in 76. Then I went on a holiday, got the sack. <laughs> <laughs> you mean sack lunch is what he's talking about. Okay, and, uh, and wh what kept you going after that? What made you come back to the sport? Uh, we felt that uh, management is more important than players at times. Uh, the big thing is management. If you've got a good management, you run a good club, your sport goes well too. Excellent. That's very true. Now, in regards to like some of the teams out here, how many teams would be in your league? Uh, we've got 12 uh, teams in our league. Okay. And, uh, you know, some are better than others. Uh, of course, we've got what you call the, the super clubs, you know, the like Bird Italias and the Kievs and the likes. Okay. But uh, we want to get along and uh, become one of them as well. Now, um, as far as premierships goes, um, have you been involved with any premiership teams? Uh, well, yes, we have. Uh, over a period of years, uh, we've been in there and, and out again. And it's the first time in about uh, 14 years that we've come back to the Premier League. Okay. Now, what is it like to run um, a situation such as this? Um, you're a prominent figure in this. Uh, what is it like to run this? Um, well, it's got its hard aches and, uh, you know, and it's happy times, right? Yeah, and we've got happy times. <laughs> but mainly we try and run it as a business. Okay. Uh, we find that it's essential to run a business. Uh, to too many sporting clubs, uh, well, right around Australia, because of lack of management skills, mm. they fall, unfortunately, by the wayside. And you can't leave it all to volunteers. You need people there that uh, got a clue or two yeah. as to how to, you know, Make the money so you can run a successful club. That's very good. Now, you know, talking about management skills, um, we have pretty good management skills too. Like if uh, some of the people don't do what we ask, we just take them back and shoot them. No, 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 just kidding. But I mean, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, please, Johnny. <laughs> I've seen this guy before. Nice haircut. Is your name James? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's three dollars and ten cents. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no, we're talking about the management. Take the beer and run. Still out of one. You're on your own. Management skills. See, it pays twice with the same bottle. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. We try to make them do that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I thought his haircut was excellent, too. Yeah, oh, great haircut. Great haircut. <laughs> now, what's on the horizon for you guys now? I mean, the club's going well and been going for quite a few years now, 24 years. What's next on the horizon for you? Uh, next on the horizon for us is we want to be the biggest. Okay. Uh, we got no time for being second. Uh, we find that uh, right through the world in sport today, if you're not on top, you're nowhere. So we've got to fight for the top. Okay. Then, and how do you guys um, want to go about achieving that goal? Um, what things do you have to do? You think differently to achieve that? Well, we just figured on doubling the beer price. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually pretty good. That's quite excellent, actually. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm gonna make sure I stop drinking beer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is a pretty good start. <laughs> Membership fees will go up, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, what other things do you have here? I mean, what other events? Are? I think you have pool, and what else do you have? No, oh, we got softball, and we even got people playing gridiron here, believe it or not. Mm, yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, like I said, softball. Uh, we run six amateur sites. Yeah. As well, we've got our own cricket clubs, so you know, we're doing very well. We got a couple of guys in our uh, club that play with a lot of softballs as well, so that's that's always good, too. Yeah, playing with softballs, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them turn out to be an old softy. Now, uh, actually, so do you have, I think you guys have things like darts and what else? Oh, yeah. What's that about? Uh, well, we play uh, social darts, you know, we're not um, in the top bracket, mm -hmm. but uh, the members like to, have, you know, just have a a bit to do on the day off, so oh. they come down like a, more like a social. Okay, then so like if you, if you didn't like the person, you just put up a dartboard and put up a picture of somebody like me, and you just throw darts at. It. Is that how it goes? No, it doesn't go like that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, you just gotta. <laughs> everybody's agreeing. You got moves in the background saying, "Yeah, get him." <laughs> <laughs> we have how much is at that, but uh, no, 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 not quite that much. Now, we realize, John, that this place, Asheville um, Club, is more than just a soccer ground. We realize you have other sports. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, 
we've had uh, not so many years ago, even La Crosse, you know, uh, two girl teams and two chance teams. Uh, the softball teams, we've got two girl teams here. Uh, we also got, uh, what were they called the girls? The play, the little ones. We've got tea ballers down here. Uh, all the high schools, uh, the grammar schools play their sports down here, not necessarily soccer. Uh, we Actually, we're an elite club because uh, we've got two amateur sides. One is the uh, Sheraton and the other one is uh, the Qantas. So if you want to go anywhere, come to us. But <laughs> <laughs> Would you organize free flights? <laughs> now, um, yes, um, and you've got darts, you've got pool, you got all that happening, a bit of softball, which we alluded to earlier. Now, um, what else is on the horizon for you guys? Uh, we, uh, we just got a, a grant from the government and the uh, council. We put in $80,000 ourselves. We, we just extended the club a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, doesn't seem a lot to a lot of people, but uh, coming to a club like this is a hell of a lot. It's hard work to raise $80,000. So uh, with uh, the help of the members and the other sports, we're looking good for the future. That's excellent. So that's to say the Ashfield Club will be around for many years to come. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we, we like to think uh, with the Liverpools and the Manchester United of Australia. That's excellent. I like to think that too, and then I see my bank account and realize that's not the case. Now, um, we want to thank you, but before we go, if someone wanted to get involved with the club, as I'm sure there'll be many people out here that want to, um, what would be a number they could reach to get in touch with you guys? Well, the club's number is uh, 9378 334, and uh, following that, we, uh, my personal uh, phone number is 9279 8075. And that also has a double o double five number with that, your personal number, is that right? That's correct. <laughs> okay, that's great. So for all you little chicky boos out there, you know it's all good. Now, um, we want to thank you, John. That's been a sterling interview, and uh, the check's in the mail. Yeah, thanks, John, uh, for that up at the Ashfield Sports Ground. And if you want to get involved with any of those sports, make sure you give them a call and uh, go down and have a look anyway. Uh, don't forget, as we said, get your pen and paper ready, because at the end of the show, we're going to be giving away some passes for the big rodeo coming up in Midland uh, a little later on this month. Uh, up at the uh, bar up there it's uh, going to be pretty pretty good fun so uh, make sure you bring your family now I'm chatting with some people here they're all up here having a bit of fun hi Sean how are you Phil Ashley okay Sorry. well this guy is not Sean so if you see him but well, you can still call him Sean anyway but it's Phil really hi Phil how are you yeah not too bad yourself good good <laughs> I get everyone's name right and your name is Lorraine Lorraine and your name Verona Verona yeah. that's a nice name <laughs> now uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, safety what safety gear you guys wear when you're uh, riding around here? Well, for a start we use these um, stone protectors for yeah. when, for when um, people in front of us and stones flick up and stuff so yeah. it doesn't hit you in the chest and stuff like that. And also, do they give you much protection if you actually fall off with yeah, these here? Yeah, a bit of shoulder, yeah. bit of shoulder stuff, you land on your shoulder. Like a, a simpler version of gridiron pads type of thing. And uh, also, you, I noticed you got a kidney yeah, belt. Kidney belt, yeah. For pretty, pretty important, would you say? I'd say it is, yeah. It's yeah. mainly the thing I wear. Yeah. yeah. I need one too, but to uh, keep uh, keep the muscles, the reserve muscles in bay. Okay, thanks very much for talking with us, Phil. Right. See, I got the name right that time. All right, we're going to be taking a break, and we'll be back with a bit more after these messages. back everybody from the break I did fall off my bike and that's why I'm doing an interview right now so uh, Justin ha <laughs> ha that's all I can say now I'm speaking with uh, Mark how you going mate, nice, how you going, mate? Great nice show. to meet you great show that's great uh, what are you sitting on here uh, Honda 250 CR 99 model yeah how's she go out there mate just hang on yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah I've stacked it heaps today as everyone knows now uh, what's the key to staying on uh, ride to stay alive mate that's the key yeah. just uh, just don't think you're too good. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. You've been down here long today? Oh, yeah, all day mainly. Come yeah. down, just in between the 
Yeah, between the rain. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Nah, it's good, mate. Ground's better, so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, how, how long you had this one? Oh, a couple of years now. But yeah, yeah. got it. You bought it new, did you? Yeah, yeah. Got it at the end of '98. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So yeah, it's great fun. That's weekend. Yeah, it's good to get out on Sunday and do something. Obviously, you, know? you get some sick air. Yeah. Well, just to keep fit mainly, you know. Yeah. That's one thing I, don't, I think a lot of people think, oh, you're on a motorbike, you know, it's easy, but it really does take the piss oh, out of you. It does, mate. That's why you just got to be careful, too, you know. They're, yeah. they're pretty powerful machines. Oh, and yeah. Tell me about You can't just jump here. on them. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. That's well, good fun, though. Yeah, Keeps yeah, coming yeah. back, so. All right, thank you very much. Anyway, yeah, mate, nice go. to meet you. Take it easy, mate. Good game. Take it easy. Right, now we're going to go to a story Wayne did in the Ashfield uh, bar. Not the Ashfield bar, the Ashfield Reserve. So take a look at this story. Hello, I'm just sitting back here swinging, hanging out with my buddy Dave Potter. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, not bad, mate. Now, uh, how often do you come up here? Uh, a lot of times. Yeah. Oh, so you've had a few good times up here? Yeah, a lot of, too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, actually, um, it just shows you that anybody can, you know, it doesn't matter. You can get up here and get along and do whatever you want to do. Um, I heard that you play a mean game of darts. Is that true? Oh, uh, yeah, I used to play darts a while ago, but I got, I used a blowpipe and little darts with a, like a golf tee and a sewing machine needle. So that's used to be darts. And I blow out of it and get it on, onto the dartboard. I used to do that. Oh, excellent. Yep, it just shows that you've got a lot of ingenuity and stuff. <laughs> I guess does that come from coming up here to the great Ashfield Soccer Club or? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then now, um, what else um, do you play any other sports here? I heard that a you. Pool, yeah. A play bit of pool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so um, you could probably beat half our cameraman, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I have to get him drunk first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that won't be hard. <laughs> They're very easygoing staff. Now, um, today, uh, are you going to play any of the uh, events today, or are you just uh, kicking I'm back? I'm just going to sit back and watch the guys play soccer. Yeah. Okay. Have a few beers later. Okay, then. Well, I think you've got the right idea. Yeah. Well, um, we definitely wish you every success. Now, uh, in regards to, I think John had mentioned, uh, in regards to the uh, toiletry facilities here, are they trying to, uh, they would like to get some funds to upgrade. So I hope you're hearing that, you know, government um, to upgrade so everyone can, you know, enjoy the uh, facilities. So um, we hope that happens soon, don't we, Dave? The, the council get their act together and give us approval to get it all done, eh? Be good. Exactly. I think they're looking at about uh, thirty thousand dollars or something in that area. Is that correct? Yeah. Because um, guys in chairs and that. And if you want to go to the Danny, it's a bit awkward in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually awkward when we go too, because uh, half the guys on the staff are a little bit uh, sloshed when they go, so it, it makes it pretty difficult. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Dave, we want to thank you for your time and uh, hope you have a good evening. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot, Wayne, for that. And uh, we've had a great time here at the uh, Pine Forest. Uh, I'm sure the boys have had a better time riding around. And this little Ashley. Hi, Ashley. You going to say hello? In there somewhere is Ashley. And she goes for rides on Dad's bike, don't you, Ashley? Ashley's going to be a TV presenter when she gets older. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks very much for that, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget, Moose, about these little passes the hippie have given us. That's right. If you are, if you gang a whole bunch of you want to go down to the uh, hippie club, write in with self-addressed uh, envelope. We'll send you out as many as you want. Go and uh, have a good time, the way rock and roll really should be down at the uh, hippie club. Tell you me about it. One of the reasons why I've stacked it so much is I had an absolute blinder last night. The hippie got magnet, and someone's touching my hair again. So I better go now. Yeah, that's why he's uh, really with it as always. Well, I had a good day? Yeah, absolutely good. And you were, Maggot, last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, don't forget, send in the uh, self-addressed uh, stamped envelopes to us, and uh, we'll send you out some passes to the uh, rodeo coming up in Midland near the end of the month. It's got all the details on it. Uh, it's up at Breaker Morant's Bar. They go the Dockers. And if you want to, uh, if you need any more passes other than what we send you, <laughs> each pass is for four people. Send it into us as soon as you can because it's only going to happen in about a week's time. So uh, get the envelopes into us. What? Hey? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you for watching. Thanks, Ashley, for chatting with us. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be back uh, next Monday night, 8 30, uh, right here on Access 31. Uh, get those letters uh, into us, as we say. And everyone, the name of the show is Balls, Balls and Awe. Okay, well, Justin's about ready to take off again. Huh.
<laughs> okay, we'll see you next Monday night. WA Net, the Hippie Club, Janabup Hollage, and a big thank you to Ellenbrook Speedway 